qualified electrical workers. These highly valued employees and contractors have the skills, the training, and the knowledge to construct, to service, and to operate a wide variety of electrical systems and equipment. They also know how to perform their jobs safely. For electrical workers to work safely, they must be able to recognize and avoid the hazards posed by the job task and equipment on which they are working. Unfortunately, working safely isn't always the case. Many electrical workers are killed or injured each year. Many are unqualified for the task they are attempting to perform, while others simply choose to ignore the safe electrical work practices they have been trained to follow. In either case, the result can be serious injury or death from electric shock, severe burns, or both. To prevent these types of incidents, electrical workers must understand and follow up-to-date electrical safe work practices and procedures. These safe work practices are maintained and published by the National Fire Protection Association, the NFPA, in their document number 70E. In today's program, we will provide an overview of the 2012 NFPA 70E and learn how following its guidelines keeps electrical workers safe. As we proceed through the program, we will also highlight the important changes made to the 70E document as compared to the outdated 2009 edition. It's important to understand that NFPA 70E uses several strategies to facilitate workers' safety, starting with the requirement that workers be properly qualified for the work being performed. The 2012 definition of a qualified person is as follows. A qualified person is one who has skills and knowledge related to the construction and operation of the electrical equipment and installations and has received safety training to recognize and avoid the hazards involved. Electrical workers who meet this definition of a qualified electrical worker will be able to determine the nominal voltage for the equipment or system, determine the required approach distances for electrical shock and burn hazards, three feet six inches. distinguish exposed energized conductors and circuits from other parts of the equipment, and properly select care for and use the appropriate personal protective equipment for both shock protection and arc flash protection. Being properly qualified is just one of the NFPA's safe work strategies. Other safe work requirements include that work be performed under an electrically safe work condition whenever it is feasible to do so. And when creating an electrically safe work condition is not feasible, following prescribed safe work practices. These work practices may include restricting access with barricades and signs, establishing various approach boundaries, requiring specific protective equipment for electric shock and arc flash hazards, and job planning requirements which include hazard analysis, job safety briefings, and the use of energized work 